Hello everybody, and welcome back to another Plomo review. Today we're taking a look at the 57, that's the company name, Grave Frog. So, starting off, as always, with the articulation. The head is on a forward-facing ball joint, and there's not a ton of range in there. I can, I can rotate side to side a bit, look a little bit left and right, a little bit up and down. Not crazy, but it, it, it gets the job done. I feel like they could have easily just added another ball joint into the actual head separate from the neck guard. Though having the neck guard move with it does mean that it doesn't break the sculpt as badly, so I can't really complain there, I guess. Shoulders are ball jointed, can get out 90 degrees and full rotation. There's a swivel at the bicep, a double jointed elbow for... Well, it doesn't quite get a full bend, but it is, it's good enough, you can reach up and grab a cigar. And the hands are ball jointed, however, these fingers are connected, though you could probably just cut that tab and have them separate. It's just a rod running through here otherwise, but thumb is also hinged, so articulated hands, which is nice. And the same is true for the big claw hand that the aquatic type uses. There's a ball joint at the waist, which is absurdly tight. I've kind of worked it down a little bit now, but when I first put this in here, it, it didn't want to move at all. The tail is a bendy wire, which is the hardest bendy wire I've ever dealt with. I felt like I was going to snap it in half when I got this S-curve into it. The hips are also on ball joints. And there's a thigh swivel. There's a slight indent on this side so you can get it all the way in if you really want to. There's a knee bend for... I don't even know what percentage that is, but it's a lot. And the, uh, the ankle here gets uh, about that far out and this far in. And then the ankle, sort of for the toe ankle thing, <laughs> is a ball joint, which you can get all the way back and pretty much all the way forward. Pretty good ankle tilt considering it's just a ball joint. So overall this thing is tiny but very well articulated. Now, getting into accessories, um, there's no painting required on this. I, I did do a little bit of painting just on the monitors and this lens just to add a little bit of color pop there, but it's not required, you can just leave it blank. Everything else is color separated and looks great. The uh, box art has this area being sort of dark gray, but honestly I think it looks better with just the full green there anyway, so... And the heads are pre-painted. Also, I do want to point out the cigar is a separate piece. You could just leave that off if you really wanted to. He does hold it really well, though. You get the uh, cigar toad, but you also get a uh, horned toad. I haven't taken them out of the bag because I'm never going to use them, but... And a yellow tree frog. This one is more for the uh, aquatic type, but you could use it for this body too if you really wanted to. And they do give you unpainted versions if you want to paint your own. You don't have to paint over the painted ones. You can work from a white base, which is nice. I may do so, actually. Now, as for the accessories that are currently on him, you get the uh, missile launcher, which does come with a scope for both sides, so you could choose which side. They do tell you in the instructions to have this up top, but I find it looks better underslung like this, which is why they give you the other scope, so when it's up there it's still on the outside, but yeah, I, I honestly think it looks better like this anyway. There is a fold-out handle if you want to have this be handheld, because it does, in fact, unfold into a regular rocket launcher, and you can just pull it off. Yeah, the backpack came off anyway. But, yeah, this is a separate piece. And it does just make a nice little rocket launcher. Also, the ammo is also removable too, but it's very difficult to get out. I will say I do personally prefer having it mounted on the shoulder. I think it looks way cooler than just having it in the hand. Tail has a bad habit of falling off, though. I do have to acknowledge that. I wouldn't recommend gluing it, because it'd be more likely to break, but... And since this just fell off anyway, might as well go over it. You get a little communicator, walkie-talkie radio. Like I said, the uh, screen is painted up, but it looks fine even without the paint. I just want it to be extra. 
Aside from that, you do get this little cargo carry with a little briefcase, which opens up into a little laptop. And again, the screen is painted, but a blank screen on this would look fine either way. Now, there is a whole, like, other half to this kit. But it's not one of those hot swap things. It's really, you have to choose one to build. So, um... You do... You get the terrestrial version, which is more of a toad, but you also get the aquatic type, which shares some parts, basically just the shoulders and the legs, but it has different feet, different arms, different body. There's so much left over. We'll go over it shortly, but yeah. Though you could give him this sort of aqua pistol thing, too. I mean, they did it on the cover art. I didn't really want to, because I kind of prefer all the weapons having the dark color and I didn't want to have to repaint it, but you can if you want. That's the thing, this, this is big on customization, that's kind of why they include all the parts for both types. You can mix and match if you want, I mean, even the, uh, the horn Toad uses the terrestrial feet with the aquatic torso, so... And there is one final thing to bring up with this, and that is a big accessory, which is also something that definitely drives up the price notably. A display base which is like twice the size of the kit <laughs> on the one hand I do like getting this on the other hand this probably could have been like almost half the price or like two-thirds the price without this in fact I would have preferred instead of this base just give us the extra parts to make two and also like I was saying about all the extra parts this, and this, and this entire frame here, this is all just leftovers that I slapped on it. They don't tell you to do that. There's so many spare parts in this thing. And finally, we do need to talk about the extra parts, because, uh... There's an extra piece on pretty much every single runner here. I cut off some of the extra parts for the base, and there's still tons on the actual runners that they came on. I didn't even need to take these pieces out, because they're part of the aquatic suit. I mean, I guess you could make the, uh, the little handheld pistol if you wanted, but you get an extra wire for the uh, plug tail. You even get extra parts on the weapon runner. And like, don't even get me started on just... There's... There's so... So many extra pieces. Like, the reason... That the price is the way it is, is because of all of these extra parts. And when you have this much left over as option parts, I can't help but feel like they really should have just included the joints and legs so that you could just build both. Especially when they do give you the extra heads. I mean, yeah, option parts are nice, you can customize it, but at the same time, you could have just let us build both guys. There's the entire torso is here, aside from the neck guard. It's it's just an absurd amount of parts left over. Like they show you common parts in the instructions. This is all they had to include, especially when the price is the way it is for how big the final kit is. Really feels like it would have been a better deal to just include the extra parts. And as for a quick size comparison, this guy is very tiny. <laughs> like, like very tiny. So when you bring in the massive display base, it um, puts it a little bit more into perspective. So to wrap this review up, the Grave Rog is a really nice kit. I really love this thing. It was very easy and straightforward to build, has great articulation and a really, really endearing design. Unfortunately, it's $30 US. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that currently translates to in Canadian. I got it from a bad toy store and they don't convert on their site, but 
Yeah, it's a little bit on the pricey end for how big this is. Especially when you're left with almost another full one in the box, unable to build it. Honestly, if they made a expansion kit for this that just gave you the extra parts to build the aquatic or terrestrial type for like 10 bucks US, I'd buy it. Absolutely. I'd be happy to spend a little bit more money to be able to build the other one. I think it, it would be worth it. But as it is, I do kind of feel like it's a little bit much for the final product. They did an excellent job with the actual engineering and, well, the, the rods you gotta put into the ankles were a little bit annoying, but I understand why they did that. But I, I don't have any problems with the actual kit. The execution is really good. I just think that with the parts that are left over, like, I understand where the price came from, I just don't think the value is there. Again, I just... I think if they were going to give you that many extra parts, they could have just included the rest of the parts to make a second one. There really is a lot of leftovers. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. Subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted for future reviews. Come chill in the Discord. Follow me on Twitter, if that's even still around, and consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep bringing you videos like this. And, as always, until next time, happy building.